good evening everybody thank you so much for joining us today uh just type a quick yes on the chat box if you can see us and hear us great yeah. great 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 we'll just uh, give maybe about 2 minutes uh, for them to join and then we'll start off today is a very very interesting uh, topic and uh, something which a lot of us are not aware about and i think as a career uh, coach um i think even i would want to know a lot about uh, this particular course and you know how this particular course can be applied in real life so thank you uh, everybody we'll just probably wait for another minute and then i'll formally introduce my speaker our uh, panelists today great i can see a lot of great uh, to begin with uh, so thank you so much everyone and all the students out there um, i think you know the drill already uh make sure that you are asking as many questions as possible i will make sure that i ask those questions um and get the answers pro from the professors and also uh, the best question will win a career guidance session with uh, one of the minder experts so keep pouring your questions we have our minder team who will be um seeing all the questions they will also answer your questions and i'll, I'll also answer few of the questions uh during the question answer round in the end uh make sure while you are posting your questions um it is addressed to all panelists and attendees uh so that our team members can track your questions so while while you are typing in your message uh there's a drop down please select two panelists and attendees a uh, great i think uh, we can start so uh let me formally introduce um our speaker of the day professor anvi professor anvi is an artist and a researcher based in new delhi Anzi is an assistant professor of visual arts at Jindal School of Liberal Arts and Humanities, OP Jindal Global University, Sonipat, India, and a PhD candidate at Amsterdam School of Cultural Analysis. His artworks were exhibited in various platforms such as Outset India, India Art Fair, uh, Yanchuan Benel. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Serendipity Arts Festival Goa, Jaipur Sculpture Park, and Jerusalem. and this translation for the short stories of urdu author sadat hasan manto was published in herbu by uh, hakibats publishing house 2018 so uh, thank you so much for joining us today sir and um, having read your profile uh, i would want to ask the first question which is about your journey in this field uh, <laughs> having um, done coaching with students uh, i have come across a lot of students who are interested in fine arts or interested in making a career in this particular field uh, but um, due to uh, family pressure due to lack of awareness a lot of them do not pursue this particular course so um, let's start off with your journey uh, i we would want your insights how your parents your family members you know uh, help you in this particular journey so let's start off with that sir. Okay, so first of all, um, Vishnavi, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure to speak about my journey, about our new BFA program, and I hope it's going to be a fruitful um, conversation. So, uh, as you can hear from my accent, I'm not from here. I was born in Israel. I came here many years back, and. Uh, one of the things that i did when i came to india was also to start this new journey in the field of art none of my family member uh, is an artist none of them have um, none of them has an appreciation for art or any background well in the past they didn't have now they have because of me and so so the whole interaction with this field was very much new for me and for them as well and obviously i got many strange questions to begin with why i do it in india why to take this kind of field what is the connection you don't have any prior uh, training and so on and so forth i think if there is a field that people are afraid of uh, when it comes to coaching and training it is particularly bachelor of fine 
fine arts, BFA. And I, I, I totally disagree. And I, this is what I would like to share, discuss today from different perspectives. First of all, if there is someone who has an inclination to creativity, or if there is someone who has a, an ability, who is able to express himself, herself, uh, visually, I think the worst thing that one can do is to block this talent and to block this uh, curiosity. Um, obviously, the, the, the kind of training that Bachelor of Fine Arts is providing is not uh, the kind of training that is going to make you a doctor and having a very clear uh, path. But if you are born to be an artist or somebody who works with creativity, becoming an engineer, lawyer, or a doctor is going to be a disaster. So please, my first request is don't push people away from what they like to do. I understand that uh, one or two decades back in India, uh, finding the right job was a must, but I think that now we are more privileged in our abilities to choose something that we would like to do, that we will enjoy to do. And living nowadays in uh, the metropolis, in a big city, uh, many times without the extended family, but with the nuclear family, not uh, spending most of your time in the office, my recommendation is to do something, only something that you like to do and that you are passionate about. So, so that's the first step. And, and now I'm coming back to the question. So for my family, it was, it was, yeah, it was indeed strange. And I have to be candid for a while. I didn't know what's going to happen. And it is only later when you come out of your BFA and MFA, if you pursue that, that you understand the possibilities that you have, and there are. I can tell you that none of my classmates is hungry for bread. All of them are working uh, in the art field, around the art field, around creative um, jobs that we are going to discuss today. Uh, so please don't worry about this to begin with. I'm not saying it's simple. We, we, we need to have discussion, but please don't push people who are destined to, to pursue this kind of career, don't push them away. They're not going to be happy when they're going to become engineers. They're not going to become happy if they're going to have money. They're not going to become happy if they're going to have lots of money. They will be happy when they will have inner satisfaction. That's the first step. That's great, that's great. And you did mention that you came here a couple of years back. So could you throw light on how fine arts has uh, evolved uh, as a career and how it was back then when you started studying and now when you are teaching students? So any change with respect to the course, with respect to the application? Yeah. So first of all, I will give you, I, I remember when I came, when I studied fine arts, it was in the beginning of 2000s. And I remember my, I had uh, one of our, uh, uh, two of our teachers were a couple husband and wife. And I remember they would come every day in cycle rickshaws. They had the fixed person to come and bring them. And at some point they got a raise in the salary and they got the car. And, and I will not mention the sum of money, but it was, it was obvious that at that time there was a transformation in how much you can earn as, as, a, as a teacher, as an art teacher, the kind of respect and, and the, the kind of uh, social standing that you would have as a person who is dealing with art. So I, I could see this transformation myself to begin with. The other thing is that nowadays many people understand that to do art is not necessarily only sitting in the studio, making sculpture or painting and then selling it. That's a, a very limited way of seeing what artists are doing. First of all, many of us are engaging in practices which are not a, a commercially viable. It means that we are not making a product and we are selling. We are involved in many other projects. We are helping in many other things, not only in teaching, but designing, envisioning, uh, conceptualizing. To be a visual artist is a very, very different vision. It's not necessarily about creating products and selling them. Those, are, those exist, of course, but there are different ways of operating. 
I think more and more people are interested in this field. In the beginning, in, when I studied, most of the people that we had were uh, people who came from traditional families that um, were working with art and craft. Nowadays, you see more and more um, educated people in the, um, in the big cities uh, coming, joining, um, interested. I'm teaching in School of Liberal Arts. We will speak about this as well. And many of the students who are interested um, to major in visual art or to pursue a BFA, our students uh, come in with families, a uh, background that can do many other things, but education in art is providing them with a different way of not only visualizing, but creating and thinking. And this kind of approach is um, giving them different tools to work. Uh, I would like to give an example from my own. We started the BFA and we realized very, very soon that we need to have someone to promote our program. Now, you want somebody to promote the program, the person has to understand the product. The product in this case is the BFA. And we were struggling. We didn't know exactly what to do. And finally, the best person that we found for this was an artist, a person who is you know, a good painter, a good installation artist, but that was not the point. We needed someone who is creative, we needed someone who can communicate visually. We needed someone who can conceptualize the messages that we wanted. It could be a designer, that's one way. An artist is also a designer. But the best person for the job was an artist. And uh, I know of several people who studied in our program, studied in other programs, practicing artists, for example, who are working in digital marketing, who are working in designing or uh, working coordinating social media, designing website, and this is a huge field, it's endless. And the best people for that are actually artists. Great. Uh, so uh, a lot of people um, have this conception that you know you don't have to study art to kind of practice um, or, or get into this field. So what is the importance of a degree? And uh, when it comes back to universities like your own university, so what are the elements which are taught, which are actually needed in a career um, related to fine arts? So could you kind of discuss about that element? Of course. So one thing is for sure, you don't need to have a certificate in order to be an artist. You need a certificate in order to be an engineer. If you are not a great engineer, yet you have the certificate, you can sign and make sure that you're going, every signature you will get, I don't know, 2,000 bucks and you're going to somehow uh, uh, make a living. To be an artist, you don't have to do that, but um, you can see the difference between people who are coming with artistic background to those who are not coming with artistic background. And my answer, in fact, is not covering only visual art. It is also about liberal arts in general. What is the vision of liberal arts? The idea of liberal art is quite simple. In order to be a successful person slash a good citizen slash cultural person, a person who belongs to a certain um, part of society who is leading who is contributing in so many ways, you need to have some kind of exposure. The kind of exposure is not necessarily by training. It's not only by being able to read certain books, I would say to write an essay, or in the field of fine arts, by the ability to paint, the ability to sculpt, the ability to take a good photograph. It is about the ways that you are thinking. One of the workshops that we are uh, running with recently to promote our program is visual thinking. The most important part is how do you think? How do you develop the sensibility, the conceptual approach for these kind of things? Can someone get it without being trained? Yeah, I mean, they are a genius and, and they can be, I don't know, a musician like Mozart who, I don't know, by birth is getting these kind of qualities. Most of us, need training, need to be exposed, need to be guided. 
And it is true that the kind of uh, education that we are providing is not, um, uh, uh, is not simply lecturing, but it is in a dialogue. We are uh, uh, trying to take something that we believe exists within the, the, I don't know, the soul of the student, and we would like to develop that. We are not telling the student, we know everything, you know nothing, let us give you the information that you need. That's the way to make a operation. That's the way to design a bridge and that's the way to file a, a, a petition in court. That, that's not the kind of uh, education that we are providing in the BFA or in the liberal arts. It is done through conversation, but you need to converse with good people. You need to converse with people of a, a certain understanding, certain depth, and that's the way you get you get into it. That's the way you develop a, a, your ability to understand art, to be a wise person, to be a person who can present a company. I'm intentionally taking examples which are not necessarily connected to the art field because that the most obvious thing is that after a BFA you become an artist. But apart from this, you can uh, uh, work in many, many other fields, uh, uh, even the most commercial one. You can work in a corporate, you can be in a design team, you can be in a cre creative team. I think that the CEO who, who, who did the BFA will be the best B, uh, 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 CEO ever because you, you, have, you are creative, you know how to see things in a different way. But again, the point is not to give you tools that you don't have but it is to develop something that you already have within yourself. You have the ability to draw, you have the ability to sculpt, you have the ability to read, to converse, to debate, and we want you to express that. So hence, I, I would recommend to do that, not, not just uh, trust on luck. Great. So you did mention about, you know, the skills required, something like ideation, designing, conceptualization. So uh, how exactly should an ideal course look like? Uh, if I'm talking about the Jindal School, um, what are the different elements which are taught to the students? How is the curriculum different from other universities? And what is the USP, if I may say, uh, in this particular program? Sure. Okay. So, first of all, what we did so far for four or five years, our school is relatively young. We are seven, eight years old, and, and, but we are uh, uh, developing very, very quickly. We have, I think the next batch is going to be around 200 students. It's growing very, very fast. Um, so, what we did so far, we had a major in visual art. More specifically, we had a self-design major which means specifically that our students, our liberal arts student, would specialize in art along with another subject. And we had very, we, we have a very interesting combinations. We have the obvious one, literature and art, history and art, but we also have a business and art, psychology and art, sociology and art. And the project, the research project, which are coming from this kind of combination are fascinating. Moreover, the kind of, uh, since our students are not doing, the students that we had so far are not doing BFA, they are not sitting the whole day in the studio and painting, sculpting, they're not the best photographers. They're not the, the, the most, uh, uh, in terms of skill, they're not the best uh, traditional skills. But in terms of exposure, in terms of thinking about art, in terms of bringing ideas which are usually not spoken of in, in a studio environment. I think in that sense, our students are very, very good. And recently we had a, a project with the Royal College of Art in London. Uh, our students were sending instructions or inspiration to MA students in uh, the Royal College of Art in London. And they did the same with our students. And I, when we started the project, I was a bit concerned. First of all, my students are undergraduate. Second thing, they're not trained as artists in the way that those students are trained. And I, I, I won't compare. I won't say they were the same, they were better. That's not the point. The point is that the dialogue was fascinating. And, and our students came up 
with fascinating ideas and fascinating artworks. So the combination of visual arts and liberal arts is, is crucial. I will explain why, and I will explain uh, through my own experience. I remember uh, after four years of BFA in my university here in India, um, we reached to the MFA. In the MFA, you are expected to work as an artist, to come up with your own ideas, to create your own exhibition. And I remember that we got stuck because we were very skilled when it came to drawing. We were very skilled when it came to work with stone, with clay. I studied sculpture. And in fact, if I could compare myself at that time to my friends in Israel, I was much more skilled in terms of traditional sculpture. But in terms of expressing ideas, we were stuck. It means we were thinking about techniques, we were thinking about art history, we always compared ourselves to what people did before, but we didn't know what we need, what we need to do as artists, what we need to express. And this is something that I simply don't face with my students in the liberal arts program, because they are inspired all the time to think and to create. So when today I, I have to submit my, the, the, the marks for my students. So I can, I can tell you from their project what they are dealing with. They are dealing with feminism, issues of colors. They are dealing with their art, with a philosophical question. They are dealing with psychological anxiety. They are dealing with so many things. Their way of seeing art is very, very different from what a normal BFA student in India will do. So if in my BFA here in India, I was trained to master traditional skills. Um, what we do in our program, one third of the BFA, one third will be dedicated to liberal arts. So our students are going to have their BFA programs. They will work very hard in the studio. But in addition to that, they will be exposed to sociology, philosophy, psychology. Those are important. Artists nowadays are not just creating beautiful images. It's easy to create beautiful images nowadays. The photographs that I have in the background here, I'm not sure a famous artist did that. Anyone with a good camera can do that. Maybe some Photoshop or some app. That's not the point nowadays. The idea is how to be able to communicate to express oneself through visuals. And that's a very, very different approach than a, a creating a great uh, landscape or a very accurate portrait. Those are important in terms of training, but that's the first stage. It's like I'm giving the example of a poet who can write beautiful words, but have no idea, but has no ideas to express. That's obviously not enough. As a visual artist, you have to master traditional and contemporary skills, but the most important skill is what do you have to say? What do you create? And this is something that we are hoping and we believe that we are going to gain by combining visual arts with liberal arts, a combination that currently and unfortunately does not exist in India. That's a very, very interesting and a new program, a combination of liberal arts and fine arts. Um, how are you, um, uh, you know, assessing uh, students with respect to the admission? Uh, what are the very different areas you're looking at? Because I, I, we all have a lot of students. Uh, so we would want to kind of help them prepare for the entire um, admission process. I love this question. Very good. Good. <laughs> so first of all, see, we are, all of us are professional artists. We dedicated six years to develop our schools in our BFA and MFA. If you think that you can only impress us by skills, means this is what we do. We teach. We know to teach skill, that's the easiest thing to do. In the last semester, I taught online drawing class. First of all, it was amazing because within this pandemic, that was the place where we could come together, create, discuss with different, without the academic tension. Second thing, I, I teach uh, sketches and drawing to people who never did that. And I don't want, to, uh, I don't want them to come with uh, prior knowledge. It's a technique. Technique is something that you can study. 
Nobody is telling a doctor, oh, you need to be a, a skilled or with talented in order to do an operation. You study, you practice, you have some knowledge, and you execute it. It is the same with drawing. Some people do it, it, it comes very naturally. Some people have to struggle. Some people draw in a very neat and clean way, and some people do it in a very rough way, which many times is even more powerful. It doesn't matter. Skill is something that we are looking at, not the most important thing. We are interested in creative people. We are interested in people who like to question. We are interested in people who have uh, an artist sleeping in their chest, waiting to wake up. We, we, we want this kind of people. And those people know that they are artists, uh, even if it is difficult for them to express that. And we know that they are artists. And by, and by artists, I mean in, in the widest sense. It doesn't mean that you have to become a painter. It doesn't mean that you have to have an exhibition. You can be a designer. You can be, you can be a CEO. I, 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 I told you, I, I truly believe in this. It's, it's the idea is of creation. You see the world and you're saying, well, that's not the only way it can, it can look like. I can, I can create something different. So it, it's, uh, I, I think this is, the, this is the way that, this is what we expect. Practically, you have to submit a portfolio. Uh, we are going to read um, concept, as I said, is something which is very important for us. Even if you fail, that's something that we want to see. Even if you think that your drawings are not good, we want to see them. We, we, we want to, we are looking in a different way. There are some students who are coming who are very skilled and we are saying, fine, we, we have to accept them for the program. It's good to have skill. And there are some students who are not very sure of themselves and we, we want them. They're actually very, very good. So, so yeah, don't, don't stop yourself. I, I, I'm, I'm serious about it. It's, um, art is, is, um, is a different language of communicating and you might be an artist and you're not, maybe not sure about it. You need to try. So I will encourage everyone to, to apply, everyone to try and let us decide if, if it makes sense or not. Otherwise, there are students who are, we are telling them, uh, we think that what you're looking for is animation. We think that what you're looking for is actually designed proper. From a BFA, one can be even a better designer, but it's like, uh, well, I'm giving, uh, uh, whenever somebody is asking me, I'm thinking about design, or I'm th and I'm thinking about BFA, what should I do? So I'm giving an example that I, an allegory, which I'm not sure is so accurate, but that's, so it's like the relation between economics and business. So you can take a course which will teach you exactly how to make a business, and you can have a wider understanding of how the market works. Ideally, you should have both in order to be a good businessman. So the same thing with design. Many of my friends who are practicing artists are also designers. And usually the fact that they are coming with the wider exposure and understanding of art is making their design much richer. So that's another important element. And how is the university helping students with respect to the practical exposure, industry, um, oh. you know, exposure? So could you kind of share that uh, yeah. with us? Of course. I think that means I, I don't, I'm not going to speak about any particular institution. So I, I will have the liberty of saying something. Um, there are many art teachers who are feeling or are, uh, uh, not very happy to expose their students to successful artists. Uh, they're feeling uncomfortable when they are coming back to class. Um, and we are working, we do the opposite. We, with our students, we are uh, always going to, we, we are in Sonipat, uh, one hour away from Delhi. We are going to Delhi all the time. We are visiting exhibitions. We are meeting and we are in dialogue with artists. We are inviting artists to come to campus to give talks, to have exhibition, to work with the artists. We have residency program. Uh, we, we, if we believe that liberal and liberal arts education 
and BFA can be taught, the best way to teach it is through dialogue. So the same thing is about understanding what is art. Art is not uh, something which exists out there, that you can read some uh, uh, prescription or a, a, a guidebook and know how to create art. No, art, art is a conversation. Art is a community. You need to know what other uh, uh, community members are doing, how they converse in order to enter into conversation with them. To enter into conversation is not just to talk, it is to do an exhibition, to uh, uh, participate in a group exhibition. It is to write about art, it is to converse about art. There are so many ways to be part of this conversation. But the moment that you understand that art is something which is changing, transforming itself, that it is a conversation, you understand that the only way to study art is to get exposure to art. In fact, since in a, a other schools in India, you don't get so much exposure to what contemporary artists are doing. I think that what happened to most of us is that during our BFA and MFA, we gained skills. Usually when you come out from Indian art program, you are very, very skilled if you follow the protocol. And when you are coming to the big city, you're going to see exhibition, you get exposure, and slowly, slowly you, you imitate, you uh, uh, process what you see, and then you come up with your own uh, expression. And it's a kind of dialogue when you have an opening, other artists are coming, and you're uh, debating and thinking and hearing what other people have to say. And next time you try something in a different way, and it's a conversation. And we want our students to be part of this conversation already. Great, great. Uh, now we would want to kind of have uh, understanding of, um, you know, your uh, insights and your experience and your um, wisdom to the students out there um, who are in, let's say, class 11, class 12 who are considering uh, this particular course, how should they proceed? What are the elements? Do you think portfolio is something which is needed? If, if that's so, then what kind of portfolio um, the, the university is looking at? So what are the expectations with respect to the portfolio specifically? Okay, first of all, I will look directly to them. <laughs> if you're considering a career in art, if you're thinking about it, first of all, don't hesitate, try. In future, in life, I can, I'm 41. At the moment, if I want to experiment and to change my life, I can't. But you are at the stage in which you can, you can try, you can change, you can experiment. If you can take the chance, if you want to try it, try it, first of all. Second thing, how to prepare yourself. Um, portfolio, yes, but how to create a portfolio? Portfolio can definitely start from what you do in your high school. Uh, sketches, painting, drawing, uh, any experiment, that's something that should be integrated. Uh, but apart from this, any good program um, in India and abroad would like to see the way that you think as an artist. Focus on concept. How to focus on concept? First of all, dig inside and see what is interesting for you and try to express it in your art. But apart from this, get an exposure. Uh, explore what the leading artists today in India and outside are doing. How do you do that? Visit leading galleries, leading museums, see exhibitions, see what they are doing. You don't have to go anywhere. You can sit and do it on your mobile, on your laptop or tablet. We are fortunate to have this nowadays. I remember getting the internet in the second year of my MFA uh, uh, in India, and it was a revolution. Suddenly, we had so many things that we can look at. So uh, preparing a portfolio is something uh, important. As I said, concept is important, not only skill. Uh, showing variety is very important. If you are good in paintings, that's great but try sculpture, try installation, try stuff that you didn't think about. That's also very, very important. I think that's the, that's what you wanted, no? 
Yes, yes. Okay. And I saw a lot of questions specifically addressed to the university about, you know, what what are you teaching, etc. So would you want to share the presentation and kind of help sure. them uh, see uh, visually as to what exactly the curriculum is all about? Absolutely. Yeah. So I already mentioned some of the points. So uh, I will go, uh, I will not take, um, yeah, I will take five, seven minutes to complete it. And if I'm repeating anything, I'm apologizing. Um, part of the things that we do when we teach uh, in the university, we have a gallery, we have an art studio. It's a very active and happening place. We are trying to create an art center within the university because, as I said, the best way to know art is to experience it. So this is an exhibition that our students help in curating. It is a, a, by Baptiste Coelho, an artist from Bombay who came for a residency a, in the university. And this is the kind of interaction that we try to create. Here is a list taken from our brochure, a, a, give you a kind of indication to what we do in the program, cutting age practices. If you want to combine theory, our program is uh, uh, relatively conceptual as I will uh, just uh, show you. So if you want to combine this, in fact, in doing interviews, I'm telling students, if you came here to draw or to paint because you don't like academics, think twice because concept and ideas are very central to what we do. So art, art is actually conceptually more challenging than other subjects. Many artists are engaging in critical theories, are you know, taking a kind of outer a, a, a perspective look at society. So this is something that we are also engaging with, but it is also important to have a social impact in your art, to interact with the community. This is another thing that we are doing. The program finally, point number six is also practical. We want you to be part of this network of artists from India, from abroad, we are constantly creating this exposure. I told you about the Royal College of Art. Um, we are also interacting with other art organizations, schools, artists. Um, uh, uh, so this is important part of the program. Um, I think that our program is unique uh, in, uh, uh, um, with regard to three major things. First of all, we are not only teaching BFA, it's not only visual arts, we are also combining liberal arts, I already spoke about. Second thing, we are not dividing our students to painting, sculpture, or applied art. Our program is interdisciplinary. Why? First of all, because we think this is what artists are doing nowadays. They are not limiting themselves to one medium. Second thing, because by ex getting exposure to other medium, you can, a, 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 you're able to gain lots of insight even to the medium that you are working with. The most important thing is that dividing art into sculpture and painting is not enough. What about video art? What about photography? What about installation? What about performance? There are so many fields. A, 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 uh, there are so many things that con uh, contemporary artists are doing which are not falling into uh, traditional categories. And hence, we are giving you a wide exposure. And at some point, when you want to specialize in something, you decide that you want to be a video artist or to focus more on painting or drawing or whatever. You do it independently and we are guiding you in the process. Our program is divided into four parts. We have study, skill, concept, creativity. Study is to sketch, to copy things around you, to study their structure. But study can also be something which is more uh, contemporary, the relation of body and space, the meaning of colors and their relation. This is, all of these belong to the part of study. Skill, not only traditional skills, to draw, to sculpt, to paint, that's important but it is also important to work as an artist today on Photoshop, to edit video, uh, to know how to work with welding, to know how to work with different materials. We would like you to have all these kind of skills. Uh, uh, those courses are usually shorter, uh, uh, more uh, um, focused on the uh, procedure and protocol that you need to do. 
but none of this is the, uh, uh, important if you don't have a concept, if you don't have something to say. Remember the poet who can write beautiful words, but has no concept. Concept is the heart of your artistic practice. And finally, there is one thing that we can't teach, which is creativity. You need to try it. You need to create. You need to train yourself. You need to try again and again. And suddenly, you have a great idea. And you, you, the whole final exhibition of the year uh, is decided in one minute. So that's something that we are going to encourage. But we are not necessarily going to teach you. You need to find your own way to do it. Uh, this is an example to a course that we did in the university. We curated an exhibition with the collection of Devi Art Foundation, one of the biggest collectors of art in India. Uh, so the, you, what you see in this space are original artworks of some of the leading Indian artists. We had artists such as Atul Bala, Gigi Skaria, uh, and other artists participating in this exhibition. They came for the opening. The interaction between artists and students, as I said before, is very, very important for us. And this kind of exposure is uh, uh, one of the best ways to teach, to study art. You can see the core structure here. There is a more elaborated program already in place. But it gives you the connection between a, a BFA and the liberal art. You can see that we are teaching every, the first two courses that you see here are taken from liberal art. So communication skills, writing, speaking, etc. Interdisciplinary studies is uh, the main pro course that we have in the um, BA in liberal art. So that's also something that the students are going to attend. We have social science, philosophy, literature, politics. And from the fourth year, uh, the student can choose an elective, not only from liberal arts, but from the whole university. I think by now we have 12 schools in the university. So it's a rich exposure. Third year, you're writing a thesis. Fourth year, we are integrating a kind of business school that train you how to develop your business as an artist, how to write application how to work practically within the art field. This is another exhibition that we had on campus of a sculptor Arun Kumar. Uh, some of the pieces from this exhibition went to Coche Biennale, a very prestigious uh, exhibition. So this is the kind, that's the level of exposure and interaction that our students are receiving. That's it, I think, in terms of my presentation. We can continue the discussion. Great. I'll, what I'll do is now I'll pull out questions from the chat box. Uh, we did have a specific questions on, uh, you know, which all industries, uh, I mean, there were students also uh, who were uh, kind of studying uh, Bachelor in Fine Art. They were either looking at a master's course or they're looking at which all industries we can kind of apply. Um, so where is the application here apart from, you know, uh, what you already mentioned? So if you could throw light on the uh, practical um, sure. industry. Yeah. Sure. After you complete your BFA, I think you already have a fair idea of how much do you want to invest yourself as an artist and how much you want to explore things around you. One option is to be an artist, full-time artist. Uh, in India, I think it's still a place in which you can make an art career. You can make a decent living. There is a way to do it. Uh, there, you need to have some contacts, some tools to do it. And if you focus on this well enough, you will succeed one way. Second way is to combine. This is what I do. I have my art practice, but I want to keep it, you know, away from commercial uh, things. And instead, I, it means I'm selling my art. I, I'm represented by a gallery, but I, I don't want to depend on that. I like education and hence I'm teaching. Um, so I will come to it in a second. Uh, the third option is um, to do something around it, to be a designer, to work in other fields. So what I want to start with the third option. The question about BFA is the same question that you have for any liberal arts students. And our students are everywhere. Um, they work in digital marketing. They work in corporate. They work in NGOs. They go for a degree in psychology. They go for a degree in business. They simply do each and everything. Why people want, a, why companies, I'm speaking specifically about companies, you know, the, 
the space which seems uh, the most uh, distant and not relevant. And because they have specialized people to do the financial things. And people who are doing the finance are people who are having a very narrow way of working and looking at things. They're not working according to vision. They're working according to protocol. Liberal arts students are not following a protocol. They are taught how to think. And in the case of BFA students, they are taught how to create and how to envision and how to criticize and how to see things in a different way. So if you ask me what you can do, I will tell you what you can't do. You can't be an engineer, you can't be a doctor, you can't be a lawyer. In fact, you shouldn't, it will be a disaster. Otherwise, you can be everything. You can work in marketing, you can be a manager, you can work in an NGO, you can be a designer. You will do all those things better. So all these options are open for you. You can go for it directly or uh, um, you can wait. If you want me, there are just endless uh, things that my students are doing nowadays and they are so, you know, successful in what they do. Uh, and people, you know, friends from the art world who have gallery and they have to run things or they have art organization. They're asking me to send my students to them so they can help them to run to run their business or organization. So yeah, any, anything, really everything. And this class of people who are capable of giving uh, or of getting liberal arts education, we all know it's not cheap, it's not for everyone. Um, those people are needed everywhere, Sim really everywhere. The twist with the, the a BFA is that you are also having this creative vision, that you can see things also in a visual way. And this is a way that other people are not thinking. And I'm always surprised when I'm going out of my art bubble and I discover the way that people are doing certain things. I'm always surprised and I'm grateful for, you know, the times that it took me maybe to sketch. I, it's not, there is no direct relation, but the moments that you, you think creatively about things, it changes the way that you think. And if you are young and you are capable, you should gain this kind of education. It will help you in future. That brings me to the next question. How important is technology in this particular domain? Do you oh. feel that students should have a background in that or, or should uh, students be comfortable with uh, technology? So what is your take on that? Yeah. I mean, technology is amazing. We are doing a lot of technology nowadays. I'm not the best example. You need to speak to my younger colleagues who are teaching digital art and other things. But we, we are always working with technology. It means even in my art, I'm using Arduino and other programming, uh, uh, either on my own or I'm getting help from people. So the integration of technology in art exists. We have special courses designed for technology. Uh, uh, we would love to integrate that. I think the combination of uh, um, engineers working with artists is something which is fascinating because engineers know how to do things and artists know how to imagine things otherwise. And I, I, had, I was working with an engineer uh, on several exhibitions and he was a very ambitious and, and very smart guy. And that, that's the reason I can't afford to work with him nowadays. He's too expensive. But uh, it was kind of amazing because I would always stretch and try to do something differently. And he would have to say, OK, let me think about it. So he would spend the whole night thinking how it is possible. And it was. So, so it's a great combination. Do you need prior technical knowledge to come for a BFA? No. Can you use that? Definitely. Yes. Can you contribute with your knowledge of art to a technical, technological environment? Yes. How? You find new ways, but, but you need to understand that nowadays people are, if you want to work in a factory, that's a different uh, story. But if you are looking to work in a startup, if you want to be the person who run the creative in a company, if you want to be a person who envisioned to be part of a, a, a team that designed different ways that the company or factory are going to function. There, this kind of education is going to be very useful. 
Okay, all right. Um, a lot of boards in India um, uh, offer fine arts as a as a course as an optional subject in class eleven and twelve. Now students have this option of taking it, and of of course, a lot of students move away to the uh, to a, a different subject. Now, uh, do you think these students who are not opting for fine arts as an optional subject, um, yet looking at fine arts as an option at the undergrad level, do you feel there's some sort of disadvantage for them? And I'm purely coming from the fact that a lot of students do come to me and ask me this question. I thought I'll put it across to you um, to come it from. You mean advantage? Uh, you mean advantage? Yes. I think so advantage. Asked, oh, you do? I, okay. Yeah, I think I will tell you honestly why. It's very, it, it, it's a very logical move. I will, I will explain. Sure. Indian Indian art education and art education. a uh, four high schools all over the world is extremely problematic it is stuck somewhere in the art which was created in the 19th century maybe the beginning of 20th century it's not really updated in fact having a challenging contemporary art in class 11 and 12 in high school maybe not the best idea it's still a level in your life in which you have to form yourself as a good person as a good citizen it's not the time necessarily to challenge things and so the way many of my students are coming with very conventional ideas about what art is and what art should be and and the more is are trained more the more a um, their concept of art is limited many times not always not always i i also have people who engage with art had great teachers and thinking about art in a very different way but this can become a problem so if you are trained obviously means we want people who have skills people who come uh, who studied art before but uh, uh, let, let me put it like this it will be easier for me to teach you can you hear me now am i audible yes yes yeah sorry your your photo was frozen so oh. it is easier for me to um, to teach you how to make a good sketch or a sculpture that's my feel you know the traditional skill then to teach you to think about art in a different way in fact i we i'm teaching a course which is called a module of visual arts a uh, to every student from our bfa program it's a very short course of 7 8 meetings and very intense and and a uh, very interesting artworks are coming from this process and uh, for the final project i'm asking them to express an idea in their art and i'm requesting them time and again don't use traditional skills you have the time that you spend on drawing or painting or whatever it won't give you enough time to think about art conceptually about the idea how you are going to use a visual language and i am always facing this problem again and again that usually the works which are the artworks which are more skilled that students are using their technical knowledge are not so inspiring in terms of concept so in to summarize if you have skills very good don't get stuck there are many other things to learn it's not enough to be in order to be an artist it's not enough to be skilled the second thing is if you don't have skill don't worry about it. you will have to gain skill that the easiest part of a, a studying art the biggest question is how to develop your language as an artist how to express ideas how to make them in a way which are not going to be a uh, obvious illustrative banal and at the same time which are not going to be obscure and they're still only by you to find this right balance it take longer than it took me to say this sentence it's a very long journey yeah perfect perfect and i think uh, we have covered all the questions uh, which were addressed to you um so i think with this and we are almost about 8 so with this i would uh, formally want to thank you um um for sharing uh, your knowledge your experience your wisdom with our students 
uh, thank you so much. So students and uh, educators, if you want to know about the curriculum of the university, feel free to visit their website. Um, they have an amazing combination of liberal arts and fine arts. So make sure you go and see the curriculum and see the uh, admission process, though we have discussed that in detail today. Um, thank you so much, sir. And all the students out there, uh, I'm sure you know um, uh, where to actually um, um, look for with respect to career guidance. Uh, Mindler is your one-stop solution. You can um, take our psychometric assessment and understand if fine arts is something you should be uh, looking at. Um, and you can, you know, uh, reach out to our uh, career coaches who can help you plan that out. Uh, so with that, I will uh, close the session. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank it's you very much. Having... It's a pleasure. If anyone would like to get in touch, um, please feel free. I think they can do it through you. Through I, I don't know. Exactly. Yes, we've just posted the link of the website as well. Uh, sure. And you can always, uh, there is an option of contact us. You can always drop in a mail. Uh, yeah, I will be happy to interact. Yeah. Sure, sure. 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 Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a great day ahead.